Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're looking at laptops for $1,200. This continues our laptop video series looking for video editing laptops. It's going to cover both Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. And if you like the notes and you want to get a copy of them yourself, jump on over to Buy Me a Coffee. I'm making the notes available, and it will continue to include all of the notes between the $1,200, the $16,000, $2,000, $24,000, and $3,000 episodes. Many more episodes coming above us here. If you believe I've got one more I need to make below the $1,000 price point, let me know. That'd be a tall order, but I'd try and find it. Let's get to the laptops. First, a quick reminder on how we're managing our scoring. The video editing laptop scoring guide here at John's Films is a John scale, and that means that you can't argue with it. Uh, we start at the top of the line, we go to Fair to Midland, and we've got For Real. Fair to Midland, for those of you not from Texas, again, it means it's okay. Yeah, good enough. All right, and these individual John's Films logos will move up as we go through our laptops and see further improvement. What we're looking for, we're looking for a screen resolution higher than full HD. We're looking for a processor that has six, but hopefully eight cores. We're also looking for a graphics card that has six gigabytes of VRAM or more. We can take four gigabytes if we're budget constrained. Finally, when we get to usability, we're talking about a subjective scale, as well as the value that comes with the hardware that gets here for the money is also subjective. I'll explain my perspectives on each of the laptops to talk about those two areas. With no further ado, let's get going. We're going with the Asus ROG Zephyrus G Ultra Slim Gaming 15.6. Yep, these laptop names roll off the tongue. I'm starting and going with price. So we're going to start at 1000 and we're going to work our way up. This is an AMD Ryzen 3750H. Do not be fooled. I threw this in here because I want you to realize it says 3750H and... Hey, I'm running a 3950, and that's the latest processor for my desktop. However, in the laptop game, AMD is up in the 4000 range. Do not buy a 3750H, because watch. This AMD 3750H with 2.3 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz boost sounds pretty darn good. However, it will get you two and a half times less performance than this a Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. But wait, John, it's the same price. Yep, here they've shoved a better graphics card in it so that you can get more out of your graphics card. Here, you're getting a 1654 gigabyte. But let me tell you what, this processor can make up for a lot of that, especially for those of you running DaVinci Resolve Free. DaVinci Resolve Free, as we know, makes much more use of the CPU. And if I were running free, this is absolutely the laptop I would go for. This is a 4800HS. Let's talk about that. This is the latest generation of AMD Ryzen mobile chips. It is a 4800, it's got eight cores, 2.9 gigahertz base clock and 4.2 gigahertz boost. So how did I rank this? Well, eight core processor, really great. Um, this is gonna be a fantastic buy. Screen resolution, still not my favorite at 1920 by 1080p, also listed as full HD or FHD. GPU, mm, four gigabytes of video RAM. It's better than an integrated graphics chip, but it's not fantastic. From a usability perspective, in DaVinci Resolve Free, I would think this would be pretty usable. The full HD screen is really going to hurt me when I'm talking about what I think. However, the value that you get out of this laptop, it's fantastic. For $1,000, I can't believe it. Uh, the, the processor that comes with this thing is absolutely killing it. What would I do if I bought this? Well, I'd probably add some more memory. So I'd put a, probably, I think it can go up to 32 gigabytes and I would add every bit of that and then move on with my life. It'd be fantastic. Our next laptop is a Asus Tough 15.6 AMD Ryzen 7. It's, you know, the model FA506 IV, of course. It has, again, an 8-core AMD Ryzen 4800H. Notice this one doesn't have the S. Now, the letters behind the name of a processor indicate certain characteristics of it. Intel uses a K at the end of it to note that it's unlocked and you could overclock it. They both use the indicator U, which means it's an ultrabook processor. For Ryzen, the S on the end here means that the total draw of power allowed is suppressed. So in the H processor, you're looking at a 45 watt TDP, and that 45 watts means that it's able to boost higher more frequently than the HS, which is suppressed and runs at 35 watts. The 35 watt TDP means that it's not going to boost quite as much 
but in turn, it's not going to use as much power. Hmm, interesting. It has 8 gigabytes of 32 gigabyte. Wait a minute, max 32. That's good. This sounds really familiar, just not the S. RTX 2060, 6 gigabyte GPU. Wait, what? What? Okay, same processor, just the lower power variant, 8 gigabytes of RAM. 2060. Holy cow. Folks, we have what I'm going to call up front the winner. Yeah, I'm not even going to get it in the rest of the laptops. This is insane. For $1,000, you can get a Ryzen 4800H and you can get a 2060 6 gigabyte variant. This is awesome. What does this laptop need? Probably about 150 bucks worth of RAM. I'd bump this up to the max. Otherwise, I wish I could rip off the monitor and put a different screen on it or something to get higher resolution, but geez, for $1,000, this is your winner. Yep, I'm calling it up front. Gotta be the winner. This is an unbelievable value, as you'll see as we go now down further. Check this out. Let's go to the Intel camp. John, you're a Ryzen fanboy. Okay, well, let's look at it. This is the first laptop I could find that was reasonably priced relative to what we needed, and it doesn't meet what we need. It's an i5-102-10U. Oh, U means ultra book. That means it is a four-core variant. That also means that it has very low base clock, and it can boost up, but it prefers not to. And that's 8 gigabytes of slower memory. Has Intel integrated graphics, no discrete graphics. Why? Well, because it doesn't want to give up the power. What is this thing meant for? Well, web browsing, email, on the go. This is more of a corporate laptop than it might be even a use-at-home laptop. So next we're looking at an MSI Alpha 15, Alpha 15, A3DD004. Woo, okay. 144 hertz display that should start to signal to you it's meant for gamers it does have an rx 5500m graphics card in it not a bad chip not fantastic i'm uh, 1650 ti maybe 1660 ish the 16 gigabytes of 2666 megahertz memory should tip you off because the latest ryzen chips do run 3200 megahertz ram and sure enough 3750h remember we avoid this like the plague i'm just putting it in here to show you at 1049 you're still getting less performance than the 999. This is not a winner. Next up, we have the HP Omen 15.6, also known as the 15-EN0023DX. It is an AMD Ryzen 7 4800H with 16 gigabytes of 32 megahertz DDR4 RAM with a GTX 1660 Ti and 6 gigabytes of video RAM, one terabyte of SSD. These specs sound quite familiar. In fact, if you were to upgrade the 1660 Ti, and you were to give up half your SSD as well as half your RAM, then you could save $200 and get yourself the tough book. Seriously, that's how amazing this thing is. So let's go check out what we think about this. From a screen resolution, the 1920 by 1080 is full HD, not my favorite. Processor wise, you're not going to get much better than this currently in your laptop. The GPU is fair to Midland. 1660 Ti, 6 gigabytes of video RAM. I like it. I'd use it. Not bad. Usability, like I said, not bad. I'd use it. Price, value, pretty good. And it would probably be one of the better price values if I didn't get a 2060 for a thousand bucks. Here we are switching up things just a little bit. You got the Dell G5 15SE. It is an AMD Ryzen 4800. You got 6 gigabytes, 32 megahertz RAM, an RX 5600M which is better than this uh, 5500M quite significantly. It is a 6 gigabytes of video RAM, if I recall off the top of my head, and 1 terabyte NVMe SSD. Comes in at 1225 with that Full HD panel. I still don't see a reason to jump. Um, when you can upgrade your SSD, you could upgrade your RAM and get a 2060. And so, John, Intel Camp, please. Okay i7 10501U, again, same core processor. You got the 16 gigabytes of RAM, a GTX 1650 Max-Q. Okay, so they put an actual graphics card in here. One terabyte NVMe SSD for $1,300. Oh, boy. All right, John, find me a non-U chip. Okay, can do. Here we go, full HD. You got a processor that has six cores of the ninth generation cores. A 9750H is the processor name. Boost clocks up to 4.5 gigahertz. You got a 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a 1660 Ti, and 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Okay, John, how does that fare relative to the 4800H? 
Uh, they're about neck and neck until this one runs out of cores and the 4800H kills it in the multi-core benchmarks, which are important for both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. So again, you're spending $200 more for a little bit more RAM, a lesser graphics card, and a little bit faster SSD. Not worth it, folks. It is by far the tough book for the win so far. Okay, here we go at 1229. 16 gigabytes of RAM, full HD, same processor as we've got in our tough book. The 1650 Ti is good, but a step down from our 2060 with 6 gigabytes of RAM. This has dueling 512 gigabyte SSDs. I like that, but it's the same thing we had accomplished with an external drive. Here we are with 1229, maybe an external drive you even shoot to and then edit on. 1229, not bad. Um, don't hate the system. Looks fair enough. I think the cooling is going to be an adequate design on it, but the full HD panel, nothing more um, in the graphics department. I can't believe the tough book is as cheap as it is. All right, more Intel screen resolution. I wanted to get a 4K model in here for those of you that are really interested. It cost me $1,349 to get there, and I'm now taking great liberties with the good old $1,200 budget. It also introduces, notice down here, this pretty cool looking touchpad. It's a touchpad, glass trackpad with a screen under it that can change so you can get different hot swap settings, um, icons for quick pickers and other things. It is on an Ultrabook processor. We know we hate those four core chips for video editing. It's got a 1650 Max-Q, which means that it is a touch throttled to save power and heat. 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. So I'm not mad at it for what it does. This would be great um, around the office to impress people with your second screen, maybe. This would be great for battery and long battery life. It's going to have okay-ish uh, graphics at a 1650 Max-Q. A little bit better than the ultra high-def graphics, the UHD integrated graphics that come with these processors. But it's not going to kill you in any games or anything. And finally, to wrap up our $1,200 look, find you another gaming laptop. This one, again, full HD. It's a 6-core 9750H processor. We've seen that one already, 16 gigabytes of 2666. Finally, we get a 2060 included, and it's got a 256-gigabyte SSD with a 1-terabyte spinning drive. So it's going to be much slower than an SSD, maybe five times slower than an SSD in access. It's 1349. I just wanted to show you what we can do to finally get ourselves to a 2060. All right, so that makes our winner the Tough Book, which we saw way back here near the beginning because its price is $1,000. How do I get that near my $1,200 budget? Well, that's absolutely going to be an additional couple sticks of RAM. Throw it in there, and boom, we are absolutely thrilled with this purchase. Well, I think we can only conclude one thing, and that's that Asus doesn't know how to price their Tough Books. Uh, either that or the rest of the machine isn't that great. And I have read a review or two that say that the color on the screen, the accuracy, etc., not that great. But really, especially if you're going to hook this up to an external monitor at all, uh, this is a killer deal for a 2060 and a 4800H. Now, if you've got a favorite laptop, let me know about it in the comments below. I'm really interested in being able to uh, put in the best laptops out there. And one of the best ways to do that is to crowdsource them. So let me know what you think is the best laptop for whatever price point you like down in the comments below. And again, the notes that I've taken here will be available on Buy Me a Coffee. Thanks for watching and have a great day.